name is Eileen Brooke Freeman and for the past three years I have led Shetland Amenity Trust's participation in the international NPP funded Thing Project. I have coordinated many of the activities across the Thing Partnership and I'm delighted to have the opportunity to introduce our project. Firstly, I should probably explain what is a thing. The word comes from the Old Norse language, meaning an assembly. Things were an early system of justice and administration. When the Vikings and early Norse settlers arrived in a new place, they brought with them their customs and legal systems. The thing was where people met to make political decisions, uphold laws and settle disputes. The thing was also a focus for religious activity as well as trade and exchange. At Thing Villa in Iceland, you can still see the remains of the booths or huts where traders came to do business with people attending the meeting. Things are found throughout the Viking world. Many can be identified by their Ting, Thing, Ding and Thing place names. Examples include Gulating in Norway, Tingwala in Sweden, Tingvella in Iceland, Tinganess in the Faroe Islands, Tingwall in Shetland and Orkney, Dingwall in Scotland and Tinwald in the Isle of Man. The Thing system for sharing and legislating power can still be recognised today and several things continue to be active. The Icelandic Parliament is still known as the Althing, the Norwegian Parliament is called the Sturting and the Fairways Parliament goes by the name of Lutting. The Manx Parliament, or Tinwald, still holds a midsummer court on the Thingmand at Tinwald Hill every year. The Thing Project, ThingSite's international networking group, is a major international project funded by the Northern Periphery Programme, or NPP, focusing on linking and developing Thing Sites. Project partners are located in Norway, Iceland, the Faroe Islands, Shetland, Orkney, the Highlands of Scotland and the Isle of Man. The Northern Periphery Programme aims to help peripheral and remote communities on the northern margins of Europe develop their economic, social and environmental potential. The Thing Project established a network to explore and promote the shared links between the northern European Thing sites and develop sustainable business and tourism opportunities in each of the partner regions. We created a common strategy for interpreting and promoting Thing sites across the network. Although each site is unique, they share many of the same concerns and challenges, and we can gain valuable insights through exchange of knowledge and site management strategies. Partners have collaborated and shared expertise to create educational and interpretive materials and activities. We have established and tested methods for raising awareness and communicating information using innovative web-based technologies and social media. I'll tell you more about all of this later, but first I'm going to introduce you to the project partners and some of the sites in our partner regions. Kulatinga was one of the oldest and largest parliamentary assemblies in Norway, thought to have been established in Gullen by King Harald Fairhair circa 872 to 932. The earliest thing site was probably in the village of Ivovik and two stone crosses mark the site of the thing. King Håkon Håkonsson's saga tells how he moved the thing to Gulai, where today a symbolic thing site has been created in the Gulatinga Millennium Park to commemorate the annual parliamentary assembly and to continue the tradition of being a place where people can meet and exchange ideas. Thingfella is the most important heritage site in Iceland, set in an area of outstanding natural beauty and geological significance. The old thing was established here in the year 930 and continued meeting for more than 850 years until 1798. The old thing was an assembly for the whole country. Meetings were held outside at the Lugberg, the Law Rock, and the Lugretta, the Law Council. Here, the law speaker recited the laws, made announcements and summonses. People travelled from all over Iceland to attend and erected temporary houses called booths. Thingvilla is both historically and archaeologically the largest and most significant assembly site in Northern Europe. In 1930, it was declared a national park 
and in 2004 the park's cultural values were recognised when it was placed on the UNESCO World Heritage List. The rocky promontory of Tinganess on the foreshore of Dorsalen has been home of the Faroese Parliament for over a thousand years. The thing met once a year during the summer when it was traditionally associated with Olofsoka, St Olaf's Wake, held on the 29th of July. Initially it was held outdoors, but later it moved into one of the small buildings on Tinganess. Tinganess still has a political function today as the Prime Minister's office is currently located in one of the buildings on the headland. The small point at the north end of Tingwall Loch in Shetland, called Tingaholm, was the site of Shetland's local parliament until the late 16th century. It was once an islet completely surrounded with water and joined to the shore with a stone causeway, but it changed its appearance in the 1850s when the water levels of the loch were lower. Shetland's place names also point us to a number of local things reflected in the current parish names Delting, Lunisting, Nesting, Sandsting and Aithsting. They're quite intriguing as little is known about them other than a couple of documentary references and some oral evidence. Similarly, there's little information relating to Orkney's thing sites. What we do know mostly comes from saga stories, folklore and partial records. Today, two place names point to thing sites, Tingwall in the West Mainland and Dingy's Howie in the East. Orkney's capital, Kirkwall, became the centre of administration in the 12th century and the Orkney Angus saga recounts several thing meetings taking place in the city, including inside St Magnus Cathedral. For many years, very little has been known about the thing site in Dingwall in the Highlands of Scotland and only the place name pointed us to its existence. However, through the Thing Project, recent historical and archaeological research has unearthed the Thing buried beneath the Cromarty Memorial Car Park. A ground-penetrating radar survey and excavation has now revealed the extent of the mound and this information is being used to highlight Dingwall's Norse heritage. National Heritage are associate partners in the Thing Project and their site at Tinwald Hill could be described as the only living thing. The modern Parliament of Tinwald meets in the island's capital Douglas, but once a year on the 5th of July it returns to the ancient meeting place for an open air ceremony where the laws passed in the preceding year are read out to the assembled crowds in both English and Manx Gaelic. Many elements of the early documented meetings have been preserved in the modern ceremony, which is followed by an afternoon of fairs and entertainments, not far off what would have been happening a thousand years ago. Now I'll move on and tell you a little bit more about the project, how the partnership has worked and what we've been doing. One of our biggest challenges was how to work together efficiently, as we were dealing with partners in five countries different languages, backgrounds and available time to devote to the project. We first needed to get to know each other, but ended up with not only good working relationships, but good friendships and connections, which could lead to further cooperations between authorities and countries in the future. To communicate with each other, we employed a range of techniques, including email, telephone, face-to-face -face meetings, conference calls, Skype meetings and Google Hangouts, Doodle for scheduling meetings and an online project management system called Basecamp. Throughout the project we faced but overcame a number of challenges including access to appropriate technology, budget changes and staffing changes but the high level of commitment of participants helped overcome these and was further demonstrated when some partner contacts continued activity after moving on to new employers or retiring. The project was managed by a steering committee and management team, supported by project coordinators appointed by the lead partner. Project activities were split up into a number of work packages, some of which were further divided into small groups of appropriate individuals who considered particular topics, for example, site management. I'll now go through the elements of the project starting with creating and managing the knowledge base. The project
project commenced by conducting an audit of all available information about thing sites. This showed where what needed to be undertaken to fill in the knowledge gaps and formed the basis of telling the thing story and creating educational and interpretive material and activities. Having assembled information about things, we then had to consider how to share it. We employed a range of techniques which would be best suited to each region. Interpretive methods, producing printed material and adopting innovative ways to recreate the past. In considering these elements, we drafted a communication and dissemination strategy and also common interpretation guidelines which were adapted for use in each region. We held lectures in every partner region, including staging a joint Shetland Audley series. Some talks were recorded to share with a wider audience and we tested the use of streaming at our final partner meeting in Norway. A series of workshops and meetings followed themes like site management, education and tourism and marketing and guest speakers were invited to each partner meeting. Partners worked with educational practitioners to create a range of educational resources. For example, the Dingwall Detective Study and workbooks developed for 12 to 14 year olds to consider Dingwall's Viking past and systems of governance from ancient times right up to the present day. The project also prompted a range of educational activities such as the Viking Day in Orkney where pupils from two primary schools located near to the Thing sites learned about life in Viking times and recre recreated a Thing meeting at Thingy's Howie. Methods of sharing knowledge and promotion have included the production of publications, leaflets, articles and books, including the production of a common leaflet and book about things in the Viking world. One of the primary outputs of the Thing project was the development of a common website which could be utilised to communicate the activities and outcomes of the project and to engage with the wider community in the work which was taking place. We improved and developed our own websites and worked with a small local enterprise to build a common website about Thing sites to share knowledge and act as a marketing tool it includes site information, tourism information and links, news and resources and is translated into seven languages. Additionally, a project website was established to detail project activities and results. The Thing project aimed to explore the use of innovative Web 2.0 services in order to engage and empower local and global communities in the project and to encourage and mobilise visitors to the sites. 2.0 services broadly encompasses any web-based technology which involves not just the publication of information in the public domain but also actively encourages and enables users to contribute to that information base and share knowledge and experiences. The Think project did not aim to create any new technologies but explored existing platforms and how they might be utilised to the benefit of the project. We identified a small number of the most popular services as suitable for spreading the thing story and engaging communities. We trialled and adopted Facebook, Flickr, Wikipedia and YouTube and also developed some new techniques such as the use of smartphone apps, QR codes and geocaching. The website www.thingsites.com contains links to external platforms and live feeds from Facebook and Flickr help to keep the content fresh. Interactive elements allow users to engage directly with the work of the project. Working with Web 2.0 and social media did pose a few challenges, most significantly the amount of staff time required. This was particularly significant in terms of moderation and creation of content. Another of the project's specified activities was to identify and document site management guidelines, including conservation and care, visitor management for the long-term benefit of the site, business opportunities and sustainable heritage tourism through increased collaboration between national tourism gateways and the local thing sites. Volume 
valuable insights were gained through exchange of knowledge and site management strategies. Although there were many similarities between sites, some of the issues faced varied greatly, particularly in relation to the scale of site. For example, Tingwall in Orkney has next to no visitors compared to Thingvellir in Iceland, where thousands of people from around the world would visit every day, resulting in traffic jams in their car parks and heavy wear on their parks. Thingvellir also faces the challenge of being located on a geological fault. In 2011, a small hole appeared right under the main route from the visitor centre to the Thing site, and when excavated, turned into a massive deep trench, which closed the access route completely until a new walkway could be constructed high above the river. We compiled guidelines for managing each of the partner sites, with some common recommendations and also guidelines for undertaking archaeological assessments in the Highlands and Islands of Scotland. These provide models for other projects and other regions. In considering how to improve knowledge of things and how to promote and market our sites, we developed a tourism and marketing strategy and employed a range of individual and joint marketing initiatives. This included developing a brand website and a range of marketing tools, for example business cards, flash drives and t-shirts. We increased knowledge of thing sites and made common connections and worked with local and national media and learned from the experience of partners who had existing tourism infrastructures. We also worked with local and regional tourism agencies and tour operators and explored the options of theme tours. For the theme tour, we developed something a little bit different, a geo tour. Geocaching is a popular treasure hunt game using coordinates and GPS devices to get out and explore the landscape. We decided that this would suit some of our small sites and places where it was difficult to pinpoint the exact location of the thing as there would never be on-site interpretation at these places. Working with the world's leading company responsible for www.geocaching.com, we hid caches in each partner region and developed a linked geotour, which was the first such tour to be developed outside of the USA. This has provoked global media coverage, even featuring in the Wall Street Journal. Crucial to the entire project has been to build up a good quality image library. We have photographed and filmed sites and activities across the partnership and this has proved essential for all project activities, illustrating publications and educational resources and use for tourism and marketing purposes, as well as injecting life into the website and web services. One of the project's challenges was how to engage with and energise communities. At a local level, we engaged with stakeholders and invited them along to a range of events to share experiences and make connections. We held a number of training sessions, workshops and lectures. For example, members of Dingwall History Society took part in an archaeological survey and in Orkney, a local history group were trained in how to record local place names. Other activities have included staging reenactments, plays and feasts, all introducing new audiences to the concept of the thing. On a national level, we made connections with other thing sites, assembly sites and other research projects. We visited and photographed other sites and discussed the importance of things with politicians. We have invited speakers to share their wide knowledge with project members and local audiences in each partner meeting. Globally, we have used the internet and social networking to share knowledge and receive information and comments on our sites and activities. In terms of recognition as a quality concept, we consider different types of recognition for thing sites, including being accepted onto the UNESCO World Heritage List. Detailed research was undertaken and a conference held to explore options prior to compiling a detailed written report. This also considered other more viable options for achieving international recognition, including becoming part of the 
Council of Europe's Viking Route under development by the Destination of Viking Association. We finally looked ahead to the future, exploring opportunities for extending the network beyond the life of the project and preparing an agenda for future research. The Thing project also stimulated some new ideas and activities. These included cultural opportunities such as the Royal Scottish National Orchestra composition and recording in Shetland where the tune was named after the Thing site and providing inspiration and help for activities at other Thing sites, for example, Govan in Scotland and Sherwood Forest in England. Some of the new ideas have been included in the research agenda for the future. Finally, we've pulled together all our activities and experiences into a service model which is available on www.thingproject.eu. The model aims to provide a cohesive and detailed record of what the Thing Project has discovered and done and a template for other sites and interested parties to consider following our example. It comprises modules detailing our activities and findings and a series of detailed case studies. It also links to our resource library and incorporates a dynamic section to encourage feedback and experiences to be shared. The Thing project has been highly successful at a number of levels. It has developed a strong transnational network to share ideas and develop strategies relating to the historic assembly sites. We have increased the knowledge base and identified where further research is required and established and tested a range of traditional and innovative techniques to sustain, promote and interpret sites. The partnership engaged and interacted with new local, national and global communities, provided business opportunities to small and medium enterprises and collaborated with both rural and urban centres to develop services. We further developed strategies for achieving international recognition for Thing sites and inspired other projects. All our collective knowledge and expertise has been assembled into new products and services, namely a book putting things in the context of the wider Viking world and a range of educational resources a report on opportunities for achieving recognition, including UNESCO World Heritage status, and a website introducing the concept of things, details from partner areas and tourism information. New services also included creating a heritage trail through a thing sites geo tour and compiling a detailed service model. We hope that our experiences and achievements will be a useful tool for many, providing case studies and summaries of activities which might be directly transferable or adapted for any projects and organisations involved in thing sites, Viking heritage, wider cultural heritage or any project interested in trialling new technologies to communicate internally and to increase audience reach and engagement.